You're going to see this a fair bit over the next few weeks, um, and I'll go ahead and give you a little preview. We are so grateful for all of the giftings in Lighthouse, those that have uh, uh, design skills, Lord bless you, Keith and Chris and Jocelyn as well, and so this year we've tapped Jocelyn to help us, and so she did the design for us, and we'll talk more about it later, but I like it, don't you? So our theme, we're beginning this Sunday, and um, Every Sunday leading up to the 28th anniversary on 22nd September, we're going to continue this theme. And then on the anniversary Sunday, we're just going to wrap it up all together. And so our theme for the anniversary is Be Joyful in Hope, Patient in Affliction, Faithful in Prayer. It's from Romans 12. Depending on your translation, you may find it says uh, rejoice in hope and things like that. Um, and actually, uh, dip, the, in, the, in the original Greek, this first one, be joyful in hope, actually the literal translation is this, in hope, rejoicing. I like that. I like that, don't you? Um, and so this Sunday, uh, the Lord a couple of weeks ago <clears throat> put the, 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 the direction and the organization of it on my heart. And so I've been preparing. <clears throat> and this Sunday, let me try the lower one. There we go, it's the lower one. Okay, this Sunday, we're going to be focusing on Be Joyful in Hope, okay? This will be our, uh, this will be the first in our series. It's just gonna be a short series. You're not gonna see the Book of Acts for quite a while. Those of you may be, some of you may be sad, some of you may be so joyful, <laughs> rejoicing in hope. But here we have Joyful in Hope. And um, as we come to this this morning, I was really praying about it. And honestly, the Lord was really speaking to my heart. But I'll also be very honest with you. I really struggled with this in the beginning because it was so overwhelming. At first I was like, okay, great, Lord. And then as I began studying and digging in Scripture, uh, actually about two weeks ago, I, I had, and I didn't even have all of the verses. Look at this. These are the Scriptures that have to do with joyful uh, being joyful in hope and the hope of the Lord. And so I really pray to God, help me to distill uh, your word because there's so much we could say, but what does the Lord say to us? That's what we want, right? And so we come to this this morning. Uh, obviously, next week we'll be patient in affliction and then after that, faithful in prayer. And this first one, in a way, seems pretty easy, be joyful in hope. But as I was thinking about it, the Lord reminded me that for a lot of people, and even for a lot of Christians, we don't always have a lot of hope in our hearts, do we? We, we kind of feel like life goes on as it is. If we've been looking at what's been going on around us, uh, you know they've done some uh, surveys of, especially of Hong Kong youth at this time with what's going on. And the, the, the uh, results were really discouraging and shocking. The, the uh, percentage of young people, even secondary school and university and even older, who feel like they have no hope right now based on the things, based on what all is going on and other things as well. Um, and we, we live not, not just in this world, and this world is part of it, but in this time where this is a struggle for many people who don't know Jesus. But as I was preparing, the Holy Spirit reminded me, this is a struggle for many of us who do know Jesus. We, we really do, we struggle in this area. So the message this morning, I promise you it's not from me. I pray, Lord, don't let it be from, I don't wanna make up something, what is your message to us? Because I need this as well. And, and I said, Lord, help me to distill it. So this is what we're gonna look at this morning. And um, I, as I thought about this, I thought some of us look at this and instead of saying, oh yeah, great, some of us immediately look at this, especially if we are a little more legalistic or we, or we condemn ourselves, we have, deal with a lot of guilt. We look at this and we immediately feel convicted or, or condemned because we think, well, I'm not joyful in hope and I don't have a lot of hope. Or we think, oh boy, great, one more list of things that I can't do in my Christian life. And so we're going to look at this this morning. The Holy Spirit's going to speak to you, and he's, as he has been speaking to me, as we look at be joyful in hope. Listen and pay attention when a lot of people use the word hope. When the word hope is used outside of Christian circles, even in Christian circles, it's usually used in very, very different ways. Uh, a lot of times it's just a simple wish or a desire um, that we don't expect to happen. For example, I hope I can lose 15 pounds before Christmas. 
okay, and, and, and we try for one week and we think, well, that's not happening, but we still kind of hope, right? Or I, I hope I can win whatever or something like that, or I hope something else and I hope I can get a really big raise at, at work, but we don't really have an expectation that it's going to happen, right? It's just a wish. Or sometimes we just feel it's kind of a vague thing. Um, I remember talking one time when I was first beginning to learn some Cantonese and I wanted to share with uh, someone about Jesus and, and, my, and my Cantonese is still very poor but at that time it was even worse and so I was trying to talk with the postman, uh, the man who delivered the mail in the building when I lived where, where Keith and B live now. Um, and he came in and I was trying to tell him about Jesus and he looked at me and he said, uh, I, Chinglish, okay, he said, well, I have Heimong, <laughs> you know, so I, I, I have hope, but it, the way he talked about it, Heimong is hope, uh, um, it was kind of a vague thing, and even for Christians, we think of hope sometimes as being sort of this vague feeling, right? It should be in our hearts, and we just have this kind of hope in our hearts, um, and what I want to say to you this morning is that is not what godly and biblical hope is at all at all. So if that's what you've been thinking it should be, it ain't. Okay? It's not. Um, but in, instead, uh, the, we're going to look at what the Word of God says. Hope is very, very different from that. Um, someone may say to you, oh, I hope you have a good day, but there's no guarantee that your day will go well, right? And that hope has, is completely, that hope from someone, it is completely powerless to make you have a good day or to help you have a good day, right? Um, and so uh, we use this word hope in a lot of these ways, but if we come to it and then understand how God means it when he talks about hope in his word, our lives are going to change for the better. Biblical hope is not a hope so, it is a no so. Okay, let me say that one more time. Biblical hope is not a hope so, but a no so. It's not a feeling. It's not an emotion. It is a knowledge of the facts. Okay? Got it? I'm going to pause there just a minute and ask if we need to turn it cooler in here. Yes. It is so hot in here. I hope that someone can make the air con a little bit cooler whoever does it. <laughs> See, that's biblical hope because I know something's going to happen right now. That, that's, a, that's a good example of it. As I say that, um, diligent people are going to get, the, are going to get the, uh, uh, the, the, the clicker and make it cool. It's really, really hot in here. A lot of people, right? It, it's, it's really, really cold, so they turn Oh, okay. So can't find the, okay. The can we? Okay. <laughs> I can make it if you can make it. Okay? Okay, here we go. Thank you. It's, it, thanks for that explanation. It's good for us because sometimes it's, it's like, well, why is it so hot or why is it so cold? It's hard to get it. Thank you very much, Kim. We'll, we'll, and then if you start to turn blue um, a little bit later, then we'll do something else. Okay, let's keep going. So, biblical hope is not a hope so, but a no so. It's not a feeling or an emotion. It's a knowledge of the facts. Now, that doesn't sound like hope that we know. So let's look at what the Word of God says. So as we look at hope, um, I want us to talk for just a little bit and let's look at some of the some of what the Bible tells us about what our source of hope is. Because a lot of us, we want things in our lives to be better or to start changing for the better. And if there's some change for the better, then we start getting hope, right? Well, everything looks bad in our lives. We don't have a lot of hope. But if things start changing for the better, then we start thinking, oh, I, well, now I've got a little bit of hope. But if we think that way, we're going to be disappointed every single time because our situations are so changeable. They're so changeable. And so your hope cannot be, my hope, it cannot be in a change of circumstances. It cannot be. Your hope and my hope has to be targeted, aimed. We have to know the source of our hope. We're, we have to know from whence our hope comes. Now I'm going to use the improper grammar and I'm going to say where, our, uh, where does our hope come from? So I'm ending with a preposition, deal with it, okay? Um, 
So let's look at what the Bible says. So let's tackle this first of all, because a lot of us think, well, I, I, I just have hope. Well, I've got to work it up myself. I've, I've got to, if I try really hard, then I'll have hope. We're going to be disappointed, and it's not, we're not going to change. So let's look at what the Bible says about our source of hope, and we're just going to look at a few scriptures. We're going to move pretty quickly, and I'm going to give you a New Testament and Old Testament verses as well. You'll find the same thing every time. Look at the first one, Psalm 62, 5 through 6. Um, for God alone, O oh my soul, wait quietly, for my hope is from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. Now, when we begin to understand that God alone is our source, our hope is from Him, that begins to change things in our lives. We start to get our eyes off of bad circumstances, and we start looking to God, who is our rock and our salvation. Will the rock that is called God crumble? Yes or no? No. Will the rock that is called God be shaken? No. He is our hope. So brothers and sisters, that's where Christian hope comes from. He's the source. It's not in you. It's not in me. It's not in our better circumstances. Here's another one. This is one that you know so very well. Jeremiah 29, 29 11. Look at this. We, and we could quote this, couldn't we? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for good and not for harm. Plans to give you hope and a future. So God is the source of hope. And I want you to notice one other thing here this morning. God says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. You and I get all messed up because we want to know the plans, don't we? God, if you will tell me the plans, let me know what you're going to do, then our hearts are, are, are firm, right? Our hearts are steadfast, because now I know. And we start, to, oh, God has said, uh, here's the plan, so whew, I can relax. And God wants us to have a higher hope than that. God wants us to know Him. And what I want to say to us this morning, and we're going to start looking at I'm not going to get to the end and say, now this is how you be joyful. You're going to see as we go through this how we can be joyful right now um, as we understand what hope is. God says to us, I know I have the plans for you. Hey, parents, let me ask you something. Have you ever had a plan and you have not told your children? Yes or no? Yes. yes. And you're going to do something. And you've got it worked out and you know how things are going to work out, and you know how it's going to happen, but your kids don't know, right? But you know. And because you're the parent, that's enough. That's good enough. That's good enough. You're the one responsible for bringing that plan about. Yes or no? Yes. You're responsible for it as a godly parent. Now, that's just an earthly, imperfect example. But you're responsible to fulfill that plan in your child's life. Your child is not responsible to make it happen. You are. You have the plan. You have the authority. You have the wisdom. You have the resources. And you love your child. And you're going to make it work out. And God is the same way with us because we're his children. And so he says to us this morning, I know what I'm going to do. Jennifer, Jennifer translation, I know what I'm going to do. Don't worry about it. But God, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And God says, don't worry about it. You just stick with me. You stay close to me. I'm going to do it. And we fret and we worry and we lose hope and our hearts get heavy because we don't know how it's going to work out. And God wants to get us to get our eyes off of changing situations because situations go up and down, don't we? Don't they? off of emotions that go in and out and up and down. And our, he wants us to get our eyes on the Lord who says, I know what plans I have for you. Now, look at this. And we can start rejoicing right now. They are plans. What type of plans do the, does the Lord have for you? For good and not for harm. To give you hope and a future. These are the Lord's plans for you this morning. And some of you this morning, by the way, we're probably not going to get through all these scriptures. Um, I'll give them more to you later. We're going to go, we'll go for a while this morning, but just, you're going to be so, you're, I hope you're encouraged even now. 
but brothers and sisters, so here we are. The Lord says, now, I want you to know the heart, my heart for you, in general, my plans for you. You and I don't know the details of this. We don't know how God is going to do that. And some of you right now, this morning, you're struggling because what is around you does not seem good. Yeah? What is around you seems hopeless. What is around you seems like it's going to bring harm to your life. Can you trust the God who says, I know the plans I have for you and whatever it looks like and whatever deep valley, whatever dark night, whatever storm in your life, you stay with me. I'm going to bring you through it. And even in the storm, even in the valley, even in the darkness, I have a good plan for you and my good plan will see you through these hard things. When we know that, we can have hope in God. Those circumstances have not yet changed, can't we? We can begin to rejoice. And that means we got to get to know God better. And I'm not trying to make, I'm not trying to rain on anybody this morning. But you and I, we need, we, we need to get to know God better. We need to spend more time. If you are feeling hopeless and discouraged and down, oh God, oh God, start, start spending more time with Him. Talk to Him about it, not to your friend who says, yeah, boy, you've really got big problems. I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> Listen, the God who has good plans for you is not going to talk like that to you. The God who has good plans for you is going to encourage you and give and put hope in your heart. Amen? Amen? Some of us need to spend more time talking with God and listening to God than we are talking to our friends and listening to our friends. Amen? That was pitiful, but that deserved a big amen. That's true. Okay. And then look at Romans 15, 13. Uh, so what we're saying is, who is, our, who is the source of our hope? God. Okay, and then look at Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope, and another translation, the, the understanding of that is the source of hope. Okay, God, the source of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Do you believe God? Yes. Not the circumstances. Do you believe God is a good God? Yes. Do you believe God loves you? Do you believe he gave you Jesus who died and rose again so that you might have every good gift that the Father has for you in this life? Yes or no? Yes. yes. And so he may he fill you with all joy and peace. Ah, in hope, rejoicing. There we go. In believing so that you may what? What? Overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. So God is our source of hope. And if you have been losing hope in your life, I just want to encourage you very, very simply. Get closer to God. Spend more time with Him. Listen to Him. And let Him put hope into your heart. Does that, does that make sense? That doesn't sound very spiritual, but honestly, brothers and sisters, get close, get near the source of hope. Get near the source of hope. Some of you have been hoping for changed circumstances. And when your circumstances change, then you're going to start feeling more hopeful. That's not what God says. God says, I'm your source of hope. I'm your source of hope. Get near me. Okay? So how do we get hope from God? Um, so, Because so, some of you are going to say, well, God's here. He's the source of hope. And I'm down here. And I'm in, down in the valley. The valley so low. You know that old song, um, hang your head over. I used to sing that song. Some of you are saying, oh, Pastor Renee, come back soon. <laughs> oh, amen. Lord, help us all. God's up here and we're down here. And how do we get this hope? Because, Pastor Jennifer, I believe you. God's the source of hope, but it's not here. God uses ways and means and tools to give us his hope. And you say, what tools? Aren't you glad that God is not silent? He speaks to us and he shows us how, how he gives us hope. Here's the first one, 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 and 17. Oh, I love this. He loves us and he has given us eternal encouragement and good hope by grace. What is grace? You don't deserve it. You can't earn it. You can't work up to the point where you qualify. Here's the good news. It's a gift of grace. That's, that's the first thing you say, well, yeah, but I don't have it. 
That's one of the ways God gives, puts, puts hope in our hearts. He just puts, He gives us, he, through His grace, He just gives us hope sometimes. How many of you have felt before when, oh God, oh God, and at that moment, the Holy Spirit just poured into your heart, He stirred you up, and hope rose again in your heart and your life. Yes? Yes. yes. Sometimes it's that way. Colossians 1.27 the mystery which was, Paul writes about this, which is what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so there is a, may I say it this way? In your life right now, are you a child of God this morning? Are you a child of God? I want to say to you that through Jesus, who lives in you through the Holy Spirit, Christ in you, that's what this means, you have a deposit of strong, unshakable, eternal hope right now in your life. Right now in your life. And you may not be accessing it, you may not feel it, you may not understand it, but it is there. It is there. And so God puts this, in, and you're going to say, but how? Keep st stay with me. And then Romans 15, 13, we just look to that, okay? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. So one of the ways the Lord puts it in is just by his power but that's not the only way and I want us to look at a few other verses this morning oh sorry somebody was taking a picture you got it Esperanza I don't mind anybody can look at my notes afterwards okay look at the next one how what are some other ways that God gives you hope how does he put hope into your heart and hope into your life um, look at this one look carefully Psalm 119 49 and 50 and these two verses are going to say the same thing. Let's look at both of them, and then let's see if we see how God puts hope into our hearts. Remember your word to your servant. You have given me hope through it. Your promise revives me. It comforts me in all my troubles. Ding, 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 ding. And then look at the next one, Romans 15, 4. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction so that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. So here's my question. What is one of the other tools, what is one of the other ways that God puts hope into our lives? What is it based on these two scriptures? And there are many, many more. These are just one Old Testament, one New Testament. What do you see here? You can, you can reply. Through, through what? Through scriptures. Through His Word. You know what's amazing to me? When I look at these two, both of these, when they were written, the only script scriptures believers had, it was the Old Testament. That's it. How many times do you and I, we love the New Testament. There's so much encouragement there. And yet, both of these say, what was written, what was written. There's encouragement in God's word from the beginning to the end. And so remember your word to your servant, you have given me hope through it. God's word is the revelation of his heart. God's word is the revelation of his love. God's word is the revelation of his character to you and to me in every circumstance. And when we understand that and we start getting into the word and we start going to his word and feeding on the word, hope fills our heart. And some of you this morning will say, that's not very exciting, Pastor Jennifer. Don't you have some sort of this, that, or whatever? I promise you, th this really struck me as I studied. And like I said, I've got maybe 30 pages, and there are more scriptures than that. Over and over and over again, what I saw was God puts hope in his people's heart through his word, through his word, through his word. If you have a poor diet of the word of God, on a regular basis, you are going to struggle with hopelessness. You're going to struggle with discouragement. Now, all of us go through deep valleys. All of us, the strongest of us, the most disciplined of us in our Christian lives, we will all go through deep valleys. We will all be attacked by the enemy. We will all struggle with feelings of hopelessness, and it won't get better, and it won't change. What I want to say to you is this. God says in his word, my word will give you hope. My word will give you hope. My word will give you hope. So if you're struggling and you don't have a lot of hope in your life, I urge you, I urge you, the number one way God grows hope in our hearts is through his word. It's the number one way. 
get it in your life. I, 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 and I don't say that to say, no, you should be doing that. I don't mean it that way. I want to encourage you this morning. This will make a difference in your life. So we see here's this, this tool that God uses. Um, so, we, so his word comes into our lives. We're reading it. How does it bring hope? How does it bring hope? Let's look at this now, okay? So I, this is really practical this morning, and I ask the Lord, Lord, help me make it practical for each one of us this morning. So look at Lamentations. You know what I love about this? Lamentations, one of the most depressing books in the Bible. <laughs> I mean, it's called Lamentations, right? Oh, look at what it says. I love this. Lamentations 3:22 through 24. Now this is how it works. Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish, for His mercies never end. Oh, here's our song. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will put my hope in Him. Now, look at this just a minute. Let me read you something from John Piper. Some of you love John Piper. Um, he's a modern Christian uh, theologian. And John Piper himself, some years ago, uh, had a had a huge struggle with cancer he he faced cancer he'd gone into the doctor's office here's what he says about hope how so the question is how does the word of god make hope happen in our hearts yeah how does how does the word of god make hope begin to grow this is what he says the most important verse in the bible for me probably is romans 8:32 he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Now, that last part is hope producing. But it's grounded in the rock solid statement that God didn't spare his own son. So let's look away from the circumstances that confront us. Look to Christ, look to the promises, and hold fast to them. Hope comes from the promises of God rooted in the work of Christ. Okay? So, we come to the Word of God, and there are things in here that you and I are hoping for that have not yet happened. Okay? This is really practical now. What does it say? Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish. I feel like I'm perishing, for His mercies never end. I feel like they're ending. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say, the Lord's my portion. So in this verse, there are mixed in some truths that you already know about God. Yes? Yes or no? Look at it. Yes. And because there are some things there, that you, are, that you already know, I've proven this, it's true, then the parts of it that you haven't yet seen, the parts of it that you haven't yet grasped, the parts of it that have not been yet realized in your life and my life, those become targets for our hope that we hold on to because we have proven God. Does that make sense? And because we know God and we've already proven some things about Him, these other things that we haven't yet seen in our lives, we can hope for with confidence because of what we've already seen. Does that make sense? I hope so. Look at another verse. Psalm 33, 20 through 22. We're going to go on just a few more minutes this morning. We put our hope in the Lord. Why? Why? God, I haven't seen it. How can I put my hope in the Lord? How is hope going to rise? Okay, let's put that principle into practice again. See? He is our help and our shield. Has God already been your help? Yes or no? Yes. Has God already been your shield? Yes. yes. And so in Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. Here's the joy in hope. Be joyful in hope. Look at verse 22. Your faithful love rests on us, for we put our hope in you. And by the way, if you're looking at the Old Testament, a lot of times you won't find the word hope. You'll find wait for the Lord or trust in the Lord. Same word. Same word. Same meaning. Okay, you say, oh, well, my, my translation, very often, wait and trust. 
Same word as hope in the Old Testament, okay? And so look at that. So look at some other ones. Guide me in your truth and teach me. How many of you are hoping, God, I need help here. God, I, 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 need, I need some direction in my life. I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to go. I don't know what the next step is. And you're scared this morning. And you think, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Get in the Word of God. God gives you His Word. And so you can, in hope, say, Oh God, guide me in your truth and teach me. How can you say that this morning? And how can you have hope? Because God is your Savior. For you are God, my Savior. Another translation, it, the full translation is this. The meaning is this. For you are the God who saves me. That's what it means. You're the God who saves me. So if you need, if you need direction this morning, you say, God, what am I going to do? God, I, I don't know. And, you're, and it seems like all doors are closed. You don't know what to do next. Go to God. Go to His Word and your hope begins to rise. Your hope begins to rise. Look at just a few more really quickly. I love this one. I am at rest in God alone. Some of us are not at rest this morning. Verse 5, rest in God alone, my soul. Why? For my hope comes from Him. I'm hoping. I don't have the hope yet. I haven't seen the realization of it yet. The answer has not yet come, but God has given me His Word. So this part I haven't seen yet. This part I don't know yet. Yet it is real. Why? Because His Word says, and we know it to be true, He's my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, and so what? I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. Some of us this morning feel like we're being shaken. Why? We've we got to get closer to the rock. We've got to get our feet on the rock. We've got to get our lives on the rock. And it comes through His Word. My salvation and glory, what? Depend on God, not on all the good things you can do, not all the, I can do this and I can do that and then I'll, my, my life will be okay, I can save myself. No, I depend on God. I can have hope because He's my strong rock, my refuge. It's in God. It's in God. And so that's how when we come to the Word of God, He ministers to us. Does that help us this morning? Just as we, oh, just as we close. Let me give you a final verse this morning. I'm going to flick through. Oh, Hebrews 10, 23. Sorry, we're going to keep on going. Romans 5, 1 through 6. We're going to keep on going. We're going to keep on going. And we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go past this one. I'll give you the notes. How about that? I want us to get to the very last verse. Uh, by the way, those of you that are dragging, here's a great verse for you. This is not the last one. I'm going to give you the last one. I wait for the Lord. Same word again. Hope, okay? I wait. I put my hope where? in His Word. So our highest hope is in God, in who He is. But then God speaks His Word, and His Word is an expression of who He is. Right? His Word is an expression. So our highest hope is in God. He speaks His Word. We can hope this confident expectation in the Word that God speaks to us. Right? The written Word and also the Word that He speaks to our heart. And then He says, I wait for the Lord. How many of you are waiting for the Lord? How many of you are waiting? You waiting for the Lord? You know what I love about this verse? God put this in here. He put this in. He put this in His Word for you and for me. Because we feel like, I'm so tired of waiting. Oh, Lord! And the example He gives, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Get this picture. It's the dark of night. You've been up all night. You're responsible to stay awake when everybody else is asleep. And you are there on the walls. You're responsible to keep everybody safe. You're responsible to look for any danger. And you're there. And you have to be alert. And you wait. And you wait. And you look. You get tired. It takes your strength. It takes all your effort. And as the night stretches on, you know what happens in your heart and in my heart? If we're the watchmen, we start hoping for the light of day, don't we? We look at the horizon. Oh, when is light going? When is it going to begin to grow light and shine over that over that hill, that dark hill? And there's this desire and this expectation. And you and I are holding on with all we have, with all we have, and we feel like the night's going on for forever. Beloved, the night does not last. 
forever. Wait for him, just as the watchman waits for the morning. More than the watchman, wait for the morning. Hope in him. Hope in his word. Let God restore your hearts this morning in his word, in his gift to you. That gift of hope, and we, we condense it here. Here's this huge anchor. I have no idea how much that anchor weighs, but I suspect several tons. Several tons. Maybe, maybe I was looking it up, maybe 8,000 something pounds or something like that. Something like that. We close with this. He says, this hope, what is this hope? It's an anchor. It's an anchor. It, the writer to Hebrews used this example. So this is how we close this morning. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for your souls. It's the hope that comes from God this morning. It's an anchor. Are the storms of life blowing you about and you feel like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shipwreck. I'm not going to make it. Oh, God, help me. The storm is big and strong, and the night is dark and it's long. And the writer to Hebrews says, the hope that God gives you, it's an anchor. You think that anchor is going to pull up out of the sand or, the, sh or the, the, the water and let that ship be wrecked? No way. No way. The hope of God in your life and my life an anchor. What type of anchor? Strong and trustworthy. So beloved, put your hope in God, not in circumstances. Go to His Word. Ask Him for hope. Say, God, restore my hope. And then do your part, which is you go to the Word of God, open your life to His Word, and see what He does in your life and in my life. Amen? Amen, amen. I'll give you some more verses next week. I'll, I'll just prepare it because um, there was so much more here. But this is, what, this is what the Lord had for us this morning. Next week, thank you so much for, your, for being diligent and, and, and listening with open hearts. Next week, we're going to look at the next part of this verse, which is, some of you are really waiting for this one, patient in affliction. <laughs> some of you really need that one, don't you? You know what? patient in affliction fits with joyful in hope. It ha they go together. There's a reason it's together. And next week we'll look at that. Let me pray for you as we close. Amen? Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your word. And God, right now, we ask you for your gift of hope through the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ who is in us, the hope of glory, a sure and certain and trustworthy anchor for our souls. We trust you, and because we know you and trust you, you, and because you are trustworthy, we trust every word that you've said to us. Help us to receive that word again. Help us to take it into our lives, and may hope rise as we go to your word by the power of your Spirit. And may we be joyful. Lord, we will be. We're already beginning to have joy in our hearts when we understand how the hope that you have given us works in our lives. We thank you, O oh Lord. Be with your people. God, be with each person as they go from this place. Keep them safe throughout this week in their homes, on the streets, in the market, in, the, in their jobs. Keep them safe through everything that happens this week. Lord, may your people shine your light in this city. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone.